Hi guys, today's topic is financial abuse under domestic violence restraining order. A topic that comes up pretty often, still surprisingly so, is when one parent is very controlling regarding finances. Parent or spouse. Usually it happens with the parent who stays home and takes care of the children and the other parent is going and working and controls finances, manages finances, and doesn't allow access to joint accounts or not joint accounts, to any accounts. So usually that's the parent who has control, sole control of an account. That's not okay. That's financial abuse. As a stay-at-home parent, there is a fiduciary duty, of course, to not overspend. However, there is also an understanding that both are supposed to support each other and not hide finances and not hide money from each other. So the parents who is hiding it is actually committing an act of abuse, restricting employment. Don't go to work. She said they could use me full time now. If I didn't know you better. I might think you were deliberately provoking a quarrel. No. What about our home. Don't worry. I'll take care of you. And then starts looking at your bills. Your shoes, your name. He just doesn't get it. Of course, having budget is one thing, but not allowing and scrutinizing expenses is another thing. Document all the things that are happening. For example, the fact that you don't have access to any accounts, that you don't have your own money that are enough to support yourself and the children. Accumulating debt on the other spouse's credit card. Another financial abuse example. Asking to justify expenses, exactly why you spent on this and that and going over it frequently without having some ground rules. For example, ground rule is if we make $10,000 a month, $3,000 is going towards savings, $3,000 towards rent and utilities and all other expenses, and $3,000 we split equally. Instead of giving $500 and say, please survive and make sure you don't overspend. Not allowing to enter into public benefits, for example, health insurance, social security, or any type of public benefit, not allowing on forcing to stay home and not work and not have access to all of that is also financial abuse. Forcing into financial decisions, take this loan, make loan, make this decision, let's buy this home and forcing and um, coercing to sign these documents, that's also financial abuse. Economic exploitation. You got to work for my business, this restaurant business, and I'm going to pay you $5 an hour. And without saying $5 an hour, the other spouse gets compensated very little. That's also financial abuse. Once that is established, if you are not able to speak to your spouse and say that's not acceptable, let's look at how much you're making. Let's make plans together how we will manage your finances our finances actually just because you're making money and I as a spouse and I'm not discriminating between husband and wife it could be anyone it could be husband and husband wife and wife it doesn't matter the spouse who are who is financially not as privileged and staying at home and making sure the other spouse is able to work because the spouse is staying with the children or taking care of the household whatever whatever the duties are the responsibilities are also shared in terms of discussing the budget and finances. So document everything, open your own bank account and ensure that you get your own savings, your own 401k contributions, whatever you need to be financially stable. If that doesn't work, well, divorce is of course one option. Domestic violence restraining order is another option. But I'm warning you, I have cases where one spouse stopped working in 1996 and now they're divorcing and another spouse is not willing to share finances. So with court intervention, that spouse will have to share. And I have enough examples where people get divorced over money because they're not able timely to get involved in the other spouse decision. One spouse says, why should I share it? All this life, I have been making decisions. And I agree. Well, 
But now things change. If the other spouse is interested, then you got to share. Then you got to share the decision-making power, also the, the, the finances, the money. Fiduciary duty, domestic violence, restraining order, all these topics. If you're still having questions, comment down in this section below. Like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next consultation. Bye!